Hello, everyone, and welcome to the ooh wrong show. Uh, this is a Spotlight Live, everyone. This is a show that we're doing on a biweekly perspective that we're talking about the topics and trends of the CNCF. Um, before we get started, I want to tell you a disclaimer. This is the official live stream of the CNCF, and as such, is subject to the code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, as we all know, please be respectful of all. So um, I kind of want to tell you about what this show is about. Again, it's basically, again, the topics that are happening from a CNCF perspective and, you know, the groups, the the, the things that are going on. And I couldn't have asked for a better start for the show for episode one. And that's in talking about KubeCon past, present and future. Now, this week for Cloud Native TV, when we were putting together a group, we wanted to do things that are like technical, but also entertaining. And I'm so proud of this week. We've done so many great things. It's been awesome from the from the support perspective and all that. But like, you know, you have to walk in the shadow of amazing giants, like the folks that are working on, you know, KubeCon and co-chairs. They do such amazing stuff. So I'm so excited for this week. And without further ado, I want to kind of introduce one by one and have everybody talk. But I want to make this interactive, you all. So please, you know, follow, um, you know, go ahead and you know, follow cloudnative.tv. So first up, I'm going to introduce our new person who's awesome. This is Jasmine James. How are you, Jasmine? Doing well. Thanks so much for having me. So excited. What, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely excited to be a part of the show today. Jasmine James, I am an engineering manager that works at Twitter. I lead the developer experience organization there. Um, uh, which is essentially responsible for making sure our developers have an amazing um, experience with the tooling um, in just their day-to-day -day jobs. Uh, so my experience with Cloud Native um, spans from my time at Delta, implementing um, Kubernetes um, and re-architecting monolithic applications to leverage that. Um, so I'm really excited to be a part of KubeCon and, and as a co-chair working with such great people. Awesome. Yeah. How many Delta miles you have? I, I, that was the first question I had. Wait, wait, let me kind of hold on. Let me hold that thought. We're going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to bring in, this is Constance Caramanolis. How are you doing, Constance? Yeah, I am good. I got my tinfoil uh, headband ready for everyone. So uh, yeah, uh, hi, everyone. I am Constance. I've been a co-chair since KubeCon EU 2020, which feels like four years ago. Um, I'm a principal software engineer at Splunk and um, I am involved in quite a few things. I work on a product called Real User Monitoring on the back end, but I'm also on the Open Telemetry Governance Committee. And I've been involved in open source, I guess, for several years now. Um, previously to Open Telemetry, I was on Envoy. And yeah, it's been fun. And co chair. Fantastic. So so good to have you. And again, I'm I'm dressed today. The, the pl part I'm playing this week is I'm uh, Constance's Greek uncle. Uh, so that's who I am today. So that's the part I'll be playing. All righty. <laughs> next up, we have. I don't know if you all, I don't know this person. Like, I'm so excited to actually meet this person for the first time. So uh, this is uh, Stephen Augustus. Hello, hello. How's it going? Nice to meet you all for the first time. Um, my name is Stephen Augustus. I am an engineering director and head of open source at Cisco. I've been a KubeCon chair for, again, time is... Time is so many time, right? Now. I've been doing it for a little bit, um, but alongside Constance and uh, really excited to, to have Jasmine join the crew now. Um, my day job is, well, my day job is a lot of uh, cloud native uh, technology. So I'm one of the uh, release managers and one of the co-chairs for SIG release in Kubernetes, as well as a DEX maintainer and one of the co-founders for the inclusive naming initiative. Fantastic. So now we have you all. And again, what I wanted this show to be for the past, present, and future, let's talk about the history of KubeCon, like as you, like the you know, first time you all went to a KubeCon and like, you know, and just kind of have that chat about, about it. Because I think KubeCon is a special place. We all know we like you all are co-chairs because you feel so strongly about cloud native and all of that. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about that. So we can go around the horn, but uh, I don't know who wants to volunteer first. I'll go, I guess, because I have an interesting story to tell about my first KubeCon. Um, but yeah, I was recruited um, by Priyanka, um, who works for Linux Foundation now, to talk on a panel just about tooling selection when embarking upon 
a huge migration um, journey. Um, so I talked on that panel. It was awesome. Um, it was in Seattle. So it was really, really great to like meet the community like for the first time. Um, and that was my first sort of exposure to like all of the great people. Um, and I learned so much. Um, and like after that panel, it's crazy that I met Constance like right after I went off stage and she handed me a card and was like, hey, if you ever want to come work at Lyft, here you go, hit me up. And like, so I joined the co-chair like a, a few months ago and I was like, oh my gosh, Constance, do you remember me? And she was like, oh yeah. So that was just a great connection um, into making this. The community is like just so small. It's such a small world, but it's large at the same time. So it's just really great to kind of connect and then like spin the block and meet people again, great people again. So, yeah. So, so Constance, like, so you're giving out cards at, uh, tell us, I, I want to know more about this. Like, so tell, so do your side of the story on that one. Like you were like, wow, this, this is an awesome person. I really want to like work with this person. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's going to be, cause this was KubeCon 2018. So I'm, it's going to be fuzzy yeah. on the details. Um, but it was, yeah, I was, I had all about like being cloud native in Kubernetes and, um, I just like Jasmine and Jasmine's answers were really really good balance between uh, it was like adopting the infra but also being really human related and that's usually my like big issue is that when we're trying to adopt technologies or forget about like the human adoption it's like you know now i'm a vendor and this is kind of funny but it's like when we're trying to sell things it's like we forget that there's such a human cost to it and jasmine was taking that into account in her responses and so i was actually with my friend jose and we we're just like oh my goodness she's amazing we're like we want her to come work with us and so that's why I was saying. And also there was another woman in tech. I was like, I was really excited about that. Um, yeah. And, that, and that's um, the one thing I love is the diversity aspect of the community as well. It's just fantastic. Again, it's just, we're inclusive and we're just, we're doing the right things that we, we need to do to, to just uplift people. And I, I just love it in general. So it's fantastic. Yeah. So, so con so, so Constance, I mean, I, it's kind of the same question, right? It's like, tell us about like, you know, your kind of first KubeCon and, and that kind of thing. So the first coupon I went to was the year before was Austin 2017. Um, the year it snowed. I um, definitely just remember looking around, like going, that was, when it was much smaller than what it is now. Um, and just being in a room, just seeing like there's so many women around and people of color and just like there's actual diversity in tech and a little bit like joking around with that. Um, especially because a lot of my teams that have been on the past were like, I was once on a team of one, one of two women on a team of 60. Um, so at least to see more of that representation was really great. Um, it was overwhelming and just really fun. And I just ended up having, um, it was also the first KubeCon that Envoy was at and like with really big presence. And so it was just really fun to like talk to people about Envoy and like we debug in the hallway, like pulling up code and after like doing mini whiteboard sessions. And um, I've actually made some friends from that KubeCon that I still talk to whenever we're in the same city and it's really fun. Yeah. I want to ask this, this question. Wasn't great, though. Though. Like, the snow was probably the, the worst part, but I'm going to ask this question, Constance, in, in terms of like for folks who aren't privy to our world, right? What, what is Envoy in general? What is, what is Envoy? Um, Envoy. Oh my gosh. Uh, I haven't described it in a long the, time. The TLDR. It is a, yeah, the TLDR. It's a networking proxy, um, but it's all focused on making network transparent to the end users and users being like application developers, infrastructure, um, why this was so critical at the time is that like microservices is becoming a hype word, but there's a lot of limitations around, say, if you're using a load balancer that's provided by a cloud provider, there's really poor visibility into it. You wouldn't like, it wouldn't be able to break it down by like, Hey, how many HP errors you're getting by 500, 501. you just say, sometimes there's an error and it wouldn't always catch that. And Envoy, um, there are other, there are other, HP, uh, other proxies around that are really good too, but Envoy was so focused on observability in terms of like, we would joke that there's a metric for that. So like if there was a weird edge case, you would have a metric for that. You can see it later on and like really clear logging and that helped accelerate its adoption. And I guess you could also say like accelerate the like microservice service mesh terminology being thrown around. And again, for folks who aren't like privy to the, you know, there's 600 projects in yeah. the CNCF. Again, it's a wonderful project. Uh, Envoy, if you all want to check it out, obviously go to, you know, there's a, the CNCF landscape. If you Google it, you can see and you can see those service meshes and those type of things. All right, I'm going to ask the next question or the, ask the same question to you, Stephen, right? Like, let, tell me about like, you know, your first KubeCon. No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd. Yeah, right here, uh, uh, my first KubeCon was actually um, same as Jasmine's. So uh, Seattle 2018, I believe, 2018, right? Um, and 
That was an interesting one. So first KubeCon, I had at this point I had met a bunch of folks in the community. I'd been doing it for a little bit, and uh, and I walked in kind of the way that we do the maintainer track sessions. We have you know, but prior we had like intros and deep dives. Um, so at that point, I was uh, co-chair for SIG release in Kubernetes, as well as SIG PM and SIG Azure. And I was doing all of the uh, the intros, and I was co-presenting on the intros and deep dives, as well as presenting in like one of the tracks itself. So, so my first KubeCon, I was doing like seven or eight talks, and yeah, so it was it was pretty it was pretty exciting. Um, so I was meeting people that were. Previously, like only squares are, are like circles that I knew from like GitHub or, or Slack and wanting to have these like really deep connections. So like we had, this was a KubeCon where like KubeCon came out. And um, so we had like the, we had the mailing list that we created. We created like a KubeCon mailing list and all of the folks that were like in on that joke at the time, we were like sending like, hey, we're going to go get lunch over here. We're going to go do, do this. So it was like, Lots of action, lots of moving around, lots of um, definitely excited about it, but it was definitely like stressful because the like the amount of time that you had to spend in certain places I was like, I gotta go run to a talk. I want to continue this conversation, but like, <laughs> um, so I do less of that now, <laughs> thankfully. So, you know, the one thing I'm going to say, and by the way, I turned off this distracting background. So you all, everybody complaining at home, it's done. Okay. Just but look at my punum. All right. So anyway, so let me, I'm going to tell you all about this. So, so let, let's talk about this in general. Like what is in it for somebody coming to a KubeCon for the first time? Let's, let, I'm going to go off script. I gave you all some questions, but you know what? I'm a provocateur. That's what I do. I want to get some provocative get the questions crowd out going. There. Get, get the, the crowd going, right? Yeah. Mix in the pot. Yeah. yeah. Stir it up. So all right, this so, guy, um, this, I just want you all to know. This guy, we do the pre, we do the pre round and everything. He's like, "Hey, are you are you good with the agenda? Is everybody locked in? You're really like really excited. We're like, "Yeah, we got this." And he's throwing out the script. Listen, he's like, Listen. Uh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Perfect there we timing. go. I, but I, but I'm gonna ask the question though. Like, what's in it for people coming in? Like, you know, like why do people come to KubeCons? I talk a lot, so someone else can start. <laughs> uh, well, Jackson. I yeah, I'll I'll say that um, I came to KubeCon because I was faced with like in a kind of an insurmountable like challenge of taking like an organization that developed like these huge applications and formulating them to microservice, and I was like where the hell do I even start? Um, let me go talk to some people that know what they're doing and are in the community and try to at least get some like advice or a direction. Um, so that's why I joined. I do think that um, one of the biggest um, mo like uh, gains from coming to a KubeCon event is the community and the people you meet. Because I've been able to leverage those relationships when I'm having like just a challenging conversation or I'm talking to leadership about the why there's people that have done this before that you can leverage in the community and talk to you about it. And it really is, is a great thing to lean on or even just vent about like the challenges that you're going through. And a lot of times I, you know, when you're coming up with solutions, if you talk to somebody and like throw it against the wall and have have a sounding board, you're able to get the solution. So I think that that's a great benefit of um, coming to KubeCon. How about you, Constance? Constance? Yeah. Um, so, definitely like the collaboration part um right it's getting to meet other people who are like because i think we forget especially i guess this is what's really cool about like things being more open source now is that we forget that a lot of people are solving the same problems and this is a great venue to co like uh what is it brain share like solve these things issues right like i actually think we should have whiteboards everywhere at kubecon um maybe we'll see if we can get that for the hopefully if la is in person and things keep on being good um but yeah, it's definitely like the the community, the collaboration. Um, I have been more involved in projects, so I actually get to see people in person, uh, right? Like just like I've been messaging you, talking to you on GitHub, and like a few like virtual meetings, and to actually get to know that person, like you know, like share a coffee and or a drink or food, and get, get to know them at a more personal level and build that community. And it's also a little bit of like celebration, right? I think um, for like either as a speaker or like contributor, you get to see how impactful your work was is um like for me uh so in 2018 i was a part of the keynote for envoy when we graduated 
and just like realizing like holy crap like I'm a part of something that is so big and I never like one, I never realized it was possible. And two, just seeing how much like people appreciate it and how much like people want to engage with it is just like it's really fun to get to see your hard work be celebrated. And celebrate with others, yeah. No doubt. How about you, Steven? Um, so I, I guess my first like cloud native event ish thing was actually like Tectonic Summit. Um, maybe back in 2016 or something, 2016, 2017. Um, shout out, shout out, Eric Parker. Shout out. What up? Uh, so that one, uh, I think uh, Redbeard was emceeing. And at the time, I was a customer of CoreOS. Um, so the, the, the event that I went to after that was CoreOS Fest. And at that point, I was a CoreOS employee. Um, so it's so really, at, at that point, it had become about friends, right? Like there are people, there are friends and coworkers that you you've been you've been kind of like in the the community minds or something kind of you know, <laughs> um, but you know outside of that, I you know to to what Jasmine and to to what Constance uh, were saying, like it really is about the community. It really is about like being able to connect with these people on a, on a deeper level. Like you, you know, whether you're working in uh, in one of the cloud native uh, landscape projects, or you are a consumer of one of these projects, um, being able to like meet up with someone and go like, I was stuck on this thing, and like you helped, like, are you the one who approved my PR or something, or like you sponsored me for for uh, you know Kubernetes member org membership, something like that. Um, I never, as a, I, I know it's like sacrilege, but I never, um, I don't attend a lot of the keynotes. Um, I, I, and when I was rather, when I Stop was on the, revelation uh, here <laughs> on, <laughs> on Spotlight Live. Yeah. <laughs> Me like, too. You're fired. No, Steve no. and I talk about this all the time. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, so as a, as an attendee, I, I, I wasn't really attending the, um, uh, the, the keynotes as much. I was spending more time like going to a coworker's talk or a friend's talk, uh, or like hallway track, hallway track all day. Uh, you know, SIG late night, SIG karaoke, all of that stuff. Um, because it really is, it's one of those times, like once a quarter, you know, maybe even once a year, if you're not traveling to all of the cube cons, that you get to actually connect on a really deep level with the, the folks that you work with every day. Um, so definitely from the maintainer side, it's that. Um, I think from the, the end user side or the I'm just getting started side, um, we built an entire track for this because we thought it was that important, right? Um, coming in for the first time, like this is daunting. There are, you know, there are memes about the CNCF landscape and like the puzzles and all of the, the, the stuff. Um, it, is, it is crazy daunting. So if we can provide an experience um, on a single track where you can just come in and get a, you know, get a, the a la carte menu of like these really great things to take home with, uh, with you, um, that's, that's huge. So I think being able to like, come and, and learn from people who are creating the thing every day like that. That's an experience you can't beat. No doubt. Um, I'm going to talk to you all about just something, I, you know, I'm thinking it's been a pretty, ch I feel so like in my heart, I feel so sorry for you all for one respect. This has been a really difficult for a live event that like, you know, people go to, it's been hard to be a co-chair and like, I'm friends with you all. Like that's the reality of it. And I, you know, I want to make sure that like, you all get that moment where you can keynote and be in stage and see in front of people, because that to me is, 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 you know, you all deserve that. Right. And I just want to say that it's, I'm, 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 not, I'm off the script again. Somebody rip up some paper, <laughs> but uh, so like, you know, to, to me, it was like, that is a challenge in this, in this pandemic, not being able to do that. Like let's, let's talk about some of those challenges. Let's talk about again, like not being able to do these live and just doing virtual and hopefully in LA will be able to do this, but let's talk about that a little bit to the challenges. Um, um, one side note, wait, Stephen, one thing, if people have ideas for like, cause actually I was just, as you're talking to Stephen, I was realizing like, we're going to start thinking about the in-person aspect if it happens. So people have ideas of like fun ways to interact with each other in like in person, please put them in the comments. Cause we might be able to leverage that. I was just thinking about that. I was taking notes for, go for it, Stephen. Sorry. Yeah. I'm just noting that, um, Jason, what's up? What's up, Jason? Also has some great uh, yeah. questions. Yeah, like yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll um, get to Jason's question. He some, <laughs> he's, he's now in purgatory after he's that pineapple up. thing. He's setting you up. Hey, I see the screen. Oh, the Hawaiian yeah. pizza? Of course yeah. it's a coupon <laughs> pizza. So, um, so um, yeah, so for me, 
I, I think that we are uh, there's a there's an aspect of resiliency, right? Figuring out how to be resistant to a lot of the things that are happening today. And I, I think part of that is part of that is realizing that you're not alone, realizing that you have the ability to kind of le leverage this community. Like they're not um, everyone is pretty friendly, I would say. <laughs> and uh, and happy to you know and happy to help you out how they can. Um, so so I think you know a lot of a lot of like the I think one of the hardest things that we had to do was um, start the shift in in Amsterdam right as Amsterdam was going from physical to virtual um, and and it was kind of like at that point it was unknown like what what exactly we were going to do and we were like waiting for the day by day feedback from the Netherlands to 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 um, to maybe shift gears, um, we threw a lot of ideas at the wall, right? I mean, even even what we're doing right now, right? This is this is one of your ideas that we you know we kind of we kind of threw at the wall, and you're like, wow, this is brilliant, right? But going a little further back, then you've got like Twitch, right? Even having a, a cloud native, um, you know, a CNCF Twitch uh, channel is a is a new uh, is a new opportunity for us, right? And, yeah. and being able to bring perspectives from whether it be a maintainer or whether it be, you know, end users into the picture, like that's what we're here for. So I think the going virtual has been, um, has been a, a win for the community overall. Um, does that mean that, does that mean we should never go physical again? Absolutely not. I miss your faces. I want to go grab dinner with you and do karaoke and just, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but but what it allows us to do over the you know over the course of the year, if you look at um, if you look at the changes to like the you know having having the Kubernetes community days, right, and and kind of extending beyond the need to to only be at one of the three events for the year or one of the two events for the year prior, right. Um, so it I think it's it's enabled. I was going to say forced, but it's enabled us to be more imaginative in, in the way that we build a, a program. For the for the the um the foundation, so I think as being like kind of a an attendee and all of those things, and also being a speaker, like one of the things I thought is like there's new, like you said, there's new opportunities and new things that popped out of it. Again, I'm, I pride myself on on the hallway track. I loved being part of that. That was fantastic. And that you wouldn't, I mean, we have a, a physical hallway track, but having a virtual one just was okay. it just added to that piece. And and we we had to adapt to that. And that's the whole thing. I think we adapted to it, which was fantastic. Um, again, go, going around the horn. Is there any any thoughts on 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 that piece? So, Jasmine, anything? Um, I I came at the end. Like so, Stephen and Constance, they had to like adjust like very very like violently. You know, when an onset of the pandemic. Um, so I'm kind of coming like after. Like everything's a little bit normal um you know hybrid is kind of like we have an understanding that this is the way it's going to be so i honestly feel like although that was a challenge um it's it's like i feel good about um lowering the barrier of entry for folks to attend and access this information you talked about hallway track like that's something if i wasn't attending kubecon in person i would not be able to experience that in like the the europe like conference i was like looking at the channel in the morning after it was already done because I was like, Steven and Constance were up late at night. I, I just looked in the morning um, and I was like, wow, like this is the same thing in person, like but on Slack and I can read all of the conversations that are happening in reference. And so I think that it was really great. Um, so I'm looking forward to how we can leverage that going forward to just make attending and this information more accessible, so. No doubt. Hey, um, I'm gonna pop yeah. this question up here. I I'm sorry, Constance, did you wanna uh, answer that as well or? But I, I kind of want to put, put this question out and, I, and ask you all to you know. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I think yeah, it was so, uh, one thing that... Oh, mm -hmm. Jinx. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I was going to say, one thing that actually kind of forced us to like think about a little bit more too is that like KubeCon kind of sold itself because of the in-person aspect and also a little bit of like the marketing. And like, there's also like, you know, like the promo videos was something new. And um, just trying to think of like, you know, Hallway Track is an example of engaging with other people. And also then to like Jasmine's point too, is just like, becoming more accessible. The like we have like KuCon has committed to always there being a virtual aspect of it. So like there should still like there should still be ways to like engage even if you can't be there in person. Mm -hmm. And now no we may have before Dan. 
Yes, thank you. I apologize. Uh, so, so uh, you know, one of the questions popped up, and again, my, my nemesis, Jason Tiberius, has this question out there, but I think it's a very legitimate question. Um, pizza. The question, yeah, pizza. pizza. How do you handle the challenge that no matter how much work and effort you all put into curating the schedule, there will always be vocal folks that publicly criticize the end result? So, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to answer the pizza question first, and it's uh, it's bacon, pineapple, and jalapenos. Bacon I'm going to abstain ham. from this. I think we should move forward. Let's move forward, everyone. Let's move forward. So 2020. Just you know. for reference, Dan loves Hawaiian pizza. Like, loves Hawaiian oh, this pizza. This interview is over. So. This interview is over. <laughs> okay, but but seriously, I'm going to take a I'm going to take a harsher uh, approach, I guess, with the response here. Um, over time, I think, I, I think especially this year, um, or this year and change, um, I've realized that you will drive yourself insane if you try to please everyone. You cannot please everyone. Um, as much as you strive to make information available, as much as you strive to create opportunities, there will always be detractors. There will always be people that do not understand what you're trying to do. There will be people who uh, who impugn <laughs> what you're trying to do without having all of the information at hand. Um, so one of the biggest things that we are trying to do uh, over time, and, and definitely like it's a it's a matter of like sustainability too for for the program long term, right? Like when when Constance and I leave, when you know when Jasmine, you know when we bring in two more chairs when Jasmine leaves and so on and so forth. Um, it's about transparency, right? Um, how do we create a, you know, how do we create a set of, of assets and, and, and a program that can be introspected pretty easily, right? Um, so whether it's through, um, you know, whether it's about program committee selection, whether it's about chair selection itself, whether it's about how we build the program, what's the actual process behind the scenes, um, what each of the you know what the program chairs, uh, what the uh, the program committee is expected to do, what the track chairs is are expected to do, what the program chairs are expected to do. Like how, like if we could pull back the curtain all the way, what would that look like, right? Um, and as we, I, th I think you know, as kind of engineer shaped people as well, um, when you see a bad process, you go. No, I'm, I'm like, I'm automating this, I'm deleting this, I'm doing something to this, right? Whether it's like writing an app to get rid of it or, or bouncing it off of a few different people, open sourcing a component of it, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, we have, we spend a lot of our days in like spreadsheets, right? Huge spreadsheets, multi sheets that are doing like, there's a diversity dashboard, there are all these things going on. Um, so like, one shout out to uh, Nancy Lancaster and Brian Lyles um, because at some point they sat down prior and just were like, no, this has to be just a little better than what we're doing today. Um, so that's the, you know, that's the content that we get to work with. And hopefully we can leave something that's even better for the next round of chairs to deal with, right? Um, but I think I think the you know I think the answer is transparency, so we can make we can make things more sustainable. If anyone else doesn't want to add to yeah. that, I think that's a perfect segue into yeah. my next question. To be completely honest with you all, um, like what do you see is like you know what are some what's some advice for for Jasmine to be honest, and also other co chairs that would come in to hear that maybe watching this and being like, okay, um, you know, we want to understand like what are some pieces of advice you all would give. Um, one, just taking to heart that, right, you're not gonna make everyone happy. And so like remaking these decisions, right? They're always like, there's no such thing as a perfect decision, like, especially when it comes to choosing talks. So like, you're gonna just make a decision with the information you have. And that is the best that you can do. And you can't really, you can't hold that against yourself or anyone, um, right? Cause the amount of time that Steven and I have like spent like on one talk, like comparing two talks and be like, what about this? What about these things here? And like, you know, and it's like, we have probably spent on some talks like 40 minutes going back and forth and comparing it to everything else. And it's like, it's just, it's a very difficult to choose all these, choose talks. Um, I would think have fun with it. I think one of the things like, if especially we're talking about the future, I remember one thing when I was talking uh, to Dan, 
other day, a long time ago, was um, talking about how to make this like a little more fun. Um, that's why like, you know, that's why I'm wearing the tinfoil hat um, is that we're all like, we're, all, we're here to learn and have fun. And so like be playful with it. Like, you know, like provide a theme that or something like that. It's, there's a lot of flexibility to kind of take it where you want to go and just see how it goes. Um, same, same feedback, really. No notes. No, uh, um, the, I agree. I agree that there is like, it is hard, especially the more time you spend in the community. Um, it is your name is on this. Um, so it's very easy to feel like negative reactions are personal, right? It's not, it's, it's not personal. It's business. Again, you can't, you can't please everyone. You have to, again, like do the most with the information that you have at the time and try to please the most people. Um, and then you, you know, you take the feedback, you take the feedback and see how you can improve. Um, as you go deeper and deeper into the community, you'll find that like, if, if people have started off as, you know, for, for the, the other hopefuls out on the, on, on the, um, the stream right now, there, there are people who have started off as program committee members. There are people who have gone from program committee members into track chairs. One of the hardest things for me to do is like call out a conflict of interest, right? Cause like at first it like, it's like, it's on the program committee, super easy, right? You're like, this person works on my team very obviously a, like or or this is my project or you know or or I'm a maintainer for the thing that is in conflict like very obviously a, conf a conflict of interest um and then as you go deeper you become a track chair you know and then it's like I can't really call that out now like I have to you know I have to do my best to put any personal feelings aside and and do you know again that's what the information that you have at the time, right? And then, and then once you're a program chair, like this is, it, you know, like you looking at the short list, you you know a good chunk of the people who are on it, right? So then it becomes like very much a compartmentalization exercise of like friend, okay, over here, like as much as I would like to see you do this role or have this opportunity or do this talk again, um, it's it's hard because you have to reject. You have to reject C level people. You have to reject, you know, your your best buds. You have to reject talks from your company. Like it, it's like it, it's it's hard. It's hard, um, and and it's okay. Uh, I love the crazy ideas idea because um, some of the best stuff that we've done, I think, ha have been like crazy ideas. Like all of the any of the promo content you've seen, that is that is off the cuff. That is off the cuff, Constance yeah. and I just like noodling in a room, going like, "You know, it'd be funny." <laughs> and then we do it, and we get a, a we get a bunch of like creative license to 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 do that. So, and again, like ne necessity there, right? Like, you know what I mean? Because you all were like, "It's like, hey, we have to come up with a video to kind of promote this," versus like doing the normal thing, be on a soundstage or whatever. Come, you know, do do the things that you normally had. And I, yeah. I think you all did a fantastic job, considering what the hell happened out there? Like, I, you know, I got to give props to you all. And like I said, I said it earlier, I cannot wait to be the first person to just stand up and give you standing ovation when you all do that keynote together. I will be that first person. I want you like, I want you front and center. I'm right here. I'm like, like front and center. Like, Constance, do it. Yes. I'm, Slow clap. I'm warning. I'm going to cry. In the <laughs> I'm, no, I'm going to be crying too. Like, I'm also like such know. a, like an emotional, like, I like, I'm an easy crier, especially when like, like all spectrums of the emotion, like I'm crying in the middle of like, I, just, okay, bye. You start Can crying, I I'm gonna start crying. Like, yes. <laughs> so, um, we have another, we have another question. This one's from Puerco. Recently, uh, tech lead released tech lead. Uh, bravo, to bravo, you, congrats, Carlos, Carlos, and Adolfo. <laughs> no? I wonder how things are looking for in-person attendance. Are folks getting ready to get together and travel, or does it look like the majority still prefer to stay at home and or can't travel? Ooh. It is, um, I think the answer to, to most things, uh, it depends. Um, so there are lots of factors at play for folks, um, especially it's not just... It's not just if you want to go. Um, can you actually go, right? Or like... 
who is in your who is in your bubble? Are you immunocompromised? Do you have shots? Are you comfortable like social anxiety? Are you comfortable being around people where you don't know their immunization status? Um, the a lot of companies have travel bans, right? You may not even be able to to go because you won't be reimbursed for. Um, for for attending, or your company just does not want you to do it. So there are lots of things at play that um, that doesn't make that an easy answer. I am personally like I'm vaccinated. I'm ready. I'm like I'm I'm itching. I'm itching to see you all. Um, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Jasmine? Yeah. yeah. What what's your thoughts on on uh, what uh, Puerco said? Um, I like plus one to everything Steven said, like everyone's situation is different. And I think that we're doing our best to accommodate like all different situations to make sure that everyone can have a great time. Um, I'm gonna be there. I am going to have a lot of fun and I'm excited to like see all everyone in person and to like have all this great collaboration. Um, and, and cause I've been, I've been like, like Steven, I've been itching for like the highlight of my year was like going to conferences. I have an eight-year-old and that would be like my adult time. I haven't <laughs> had that in a whole year. I need it. So I'm excited to go. <laughs> wait, is everybody, wait, is everybody like, she's got an eight-year-old? You don't look like you have an eight-year-old. You're, you're just gorgeous. I'm sorry. I'm going to throw it out there. You're beautiful. So uh, in terms of in general, like that's fantastic. Let me, so, so let me, let me ask you this. I want to, again, double click on, on Jasmine a couple more seconds. Like, like, what is it like, you know, from, from, especially from a co-chair perspective, like, what is it like some of the things like, you're like, wow, I'm so, I'm so psyched about these things coming in as a co-chair that I want to help, you know, foster and, and grow even further. Yeah. I think that Steven alluded to it, just the transparency, right? Like making sure that everyone knows the processes that we have in place as co-chairs and can input improvements to it. So exposing it as docs, right? I'll put it out there because I just want to make it better. I think you should always leave in any environment you in better than you found it. So just making it known, right? And then we're ta we'll take that feedback, incorporate it from all directions and then making it better. So I'm looking forward to that mostly. Fantastic. All right. So let me I ask about this, just KubeCon in general. This is the future part, right? Future events. We talked about some things that would be cool, but let's like put our hats on like no, like, uh, Priyanka, look away. Okay, earmuffs, earmuffs. Um, if you there was no budget restraints and you were p uh, having the perfect KubeCon, tell tell me about it. who who wants to take that one first. You you gave us too few parameters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I know. I need some will... constraints. And, yeah, yeah, like, There's no restraints. Like this is like the perfect. This let's plan the perfect KubeCon. Unlimited access, right? Uh, you know, again, going back to the whole like people can't attend for various reasons, right? They're already uh, they're already um, various scholarship opportunities um, for people, but. Uh, like if you said you wanted to go to KubeCon and you were a maintainer for literally anything in the landscape, like done. Um, the idea of like, I personally love contributor summit uh, for, for the Kubernetes side. That is uh, that is like a day zero event. Um, and essentially what happens is like, we plan we plan a cool thing and we you know and we have some food have some drinks and and just kind of all the kubernetes maintainers hang out we also have like new contributor um like there there's like a current uh contributors track and then there's like a a, a new uh new contributors track um so we haven't i feel like we haven't done the a version of that like to the same you know to the same energy that we have um if we were in person uh in a little bit and like having that be a multi-day thing would would make me excited. Um, the day zero events have um, there are too many. There are too many things to do, um, and that is that is awesome, and it is terrible simultaneously, right? Because for any one person who is kind of involved or has multiple hats, and they're kind of in like 
multiple day zeros, but they're also in, in like events or they're running a sponsor booth or they're going to be on stage. Um, it's hard to like split yourself in that many pieces and give the same amount of attention to each of those pieces. Um, so multi-week, I don't know, like, like have it <laughs> too much. Are we going too crazy? But like spreading the, the day zeros out into, um, you know, and giving them the attention that they would need. Right. Um, yeah, it's, there's so, there's so much cool stuff going on that I don't see, right. Occasionally I'll see something cool. I'm like, cool retweet. Like, Oh my God, what is this? This is happening. Um, and sometimes you straight up, you miss it. Like this week was, um, this week was like maintainer week. Uh, and there were, there were various events that they did for open source maintainers. I didn't get to go to any of those and I really wanted to, right. Um, so it's one of those things where like now we have all of these events that are kind of stacked on on top of each other and it's hard to like give that mental energy to each one. Um, so you're forced to choose. Uh, so giving more space for that when we when we go back to physical. Um, and I and I know this one's in this one's in LA. Um, doing a cool event that's outside of like the conference center, right? So there's a previous cube kind of think of San Diego where folks went out to Disney Land World. Land is that the one in? Maybe Land. Okay, land yeah. Is California. Land. So it was a they did like QB Land. Um, so I think it was like uh, Justin Garrison and a few other folks worked on putting that together. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. So Constance, um, well, again, Dream yeah. Dream Coupon, perfect coupon. All right. Um, so when initially I was thinking it'd be really nice if we we're like in an all inclusive resort somewhere in like in like warm weather, but it's also because now like canada announced that they were reducing restrictions for fully vaccinated canadians so like my family might be able to come down soon i um, very excited about that um but i actually think one thing kind of like leads like more related to content is like actually like really good trainings and workshops like trainings around like you know maybe like let's do even like cfp submissions but also like you know really detailed workshops and um I don't know, just like even like training about like, you know, like better mentorship things. Like we have to like, especially if we have like a million budget, then we can get like some really high profile people to come give these workshops and trainings. And I think that'd be really fun. And um, yeah, uh, better coffee. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it better, better coffee in the morning and better snacks because as a Seattle coffee snob. Okay. Counterpoint. And Starbucks doesn't count everybody. Counterpoint. We just make the conference at night. Like that is when Steven, that's like, I can't stay up that late anymore. <laughs> Not everyone is on a Stephen Augustus time zone. No comment. All right, Jasmine. <laughs> yeah. Jasmine this to yeah. You. Yeah. So I'm definitely on the same wavelength as Constance. Like just, you know, obviously we have great diversity in the open source community, but just continuing to push that right and making things more available, um, you know, supporting people from non-traditional backgrounds to, be exposed to cloud native, like the men through mentorship, through classes, things of that nature. Um, Contributor Summit, also a fantastic idea because I do feel like one of the ways that a lot of people get involved with coding and development is leveraging open source, but not knowing how to contribute to that. So inviting those folks to make build relationships and then find mentors so that they can become contributors within the cloud native environment. Um, I somehow, I pictured like a better version of the Fire Fest meets CubeCon. <laughs> so, You're setting the bar really low. <laughs> what, well, the, 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 the like, fire fest, not the actual, the best, not the right? implementation, like I the know, reference architecture, not the implementation. <laughs> the implementation <laughs> of the fire fest, we all would be eating like a, like nothing, uh, a cheese sandwich. Did you ever oh, see that? Like, oh, I wish we had a blurb here. Yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah, all those thoughts and co great coffee is always a win. So yeah, nice. <laughs> but like the I hype factor, the hype factor, like the festival vibe of that. Like, yeah, I mean, we're you're all you're all superstars. Like, why not? Why not do something that's indicative of that, right? Yeah. So the only thing I guess like more of the quiet spaces because like so I'm an extra introvert and I could be extra for like an hour or two and then I need to hide. And so we need to make sure too, it's not so overwhelming for those who, you know, uh, appreciate a more introverted interactions. Um, so maybe more puppies and kittens and like, you know, maybe like has some hypoallergenic ones and other type of those like a comfort and a rejuvenating experience. 
Capybaras, perhaps? There we Shout go. out, Gwen. Yeah. <gasps> but are, do they, can they really be pet, petted, though? They probably can. Can't. Can we get capybaras? Like, is that a, can we put that on the list? Yes. Someone, please. Someone, anybody? Like, <laughs> Who's got that Goats. one? All right. <laughs> yeah. Goats, and this are also a parent to ca- capybaras as well. All right. So with that, uh, final question here, closing thought. Who has, just our closing thought here, who has their kind of, what are they thinking? What's what's something they want to kind of impart in, with it, in the world right now? Uh, I don't know. Who wants to take that one first? About Cube Connor in general. General. Okay. So I guess I guess the biggest one is I've been noting I, I've been noticing, and I think a, a lot of people have like just the people are on the edge a little bit, right? A lot bit actually. The interactions that you would normally have with people seem harder. To do um, so, hashtag be kind, right? Take a little bit more time to try to understand the situation that you're in or the perspective that people are, are coming from, um, and and ask the question sometimes, right? Like if you're in a, if you're in like a weird situation, you're like, we've never been in this situation before. Like, what's happening? Like, actually say like, are you okay? Do you need to talk about something that might not be this thing? Um, because that's that's coming out in a lot of our communication right now. So take a little extra time with how you communicate. Um, be clear, like have intent, um, and try to bring your try to bring that honesty into everything that you do. Like even if it's a like it, it's an issue, it's a pull request, it's a you know even if you sound a little snarky on something, like try to try to pull that back. Constance, uh, I need another minute to think. All right, Jasmine. Pass it on Jasmine. Um, I was kind of formulating this more of from a like CubeCon perspective, so maybe I'll approach it from that angle. Um, I just my closing thoughts are: I, I first want to make sure I give a public shout out to Stephen and Constance just for embracing me and the co-chair just circle of love. It's been great. Um, I'm really excited to um, kind of take. I'm really excited to take this on um, with new co-chairs and like you all have created a great culture and you've done a great job over the past um, couple of years and um, I'm just looking forward to what comes next. Um, we've already seen like a lot of growth. Like I'm coming from an end user perspective. We now have three co-chairs, so I'm really excited about the different perspectives um, and how that's going to um, just really evolve KubeCon experience for everyone. So. Yeah, just want to say thank you and looking forward to it. Okay. <laughs> um, the only thing I can say right now is everyone get vaccinated. Like let's let's uh let's make it safe for everyone to be out in the world because I think it's very um, one thing that I'm kind of realizing is like how privilege we are at least if you're in the states any in north america and places that have access to vaccines we're so privileged to have those vaccines so let's not waste those and make it a safer place for everyone Fantastic. Uh, right because i think part of the thing we we're talking about was people being able to come to la right like if they don't have if they're not vaccinated it's gonna be really dangerous for them right and so like let's make sure that we you know all that stuff there take care of you I, 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 and mental I, health too yeah, I would extend that and say, like, consider someone else's risk profile too. Whether you are yeah, or aren't, exactly. don't bring that to the conference. Don't bring that to other people. Yeah. Like, you, you can have your opinions. Like, we're trying to protect everyone. So don't bring that here. And with that, everyone, I want to thank you all for being on the first, my first show. Appreciate you all. I mean, again, we put this up in, you know, I, I, I love you all again, really amazing people. And Jasmine, nice to meet you. Like, you know, like, and you know, again, any family of these, these folks are folks of mine. So appreciate you. And I wish you nothing but, but success. So thank you all for being on the show. KubeCon, when you're here, your family. (laughs) (laughs) All right, y'all. Well, I'm going to close with this, uh, everyone. So next week, um, we starting on Monday with, uh, with Duffy. Duffy is being taken over this week in cloud native. I'm really excited about that. Duffy Cooley is fantastic. And you're going to see some really, really great stuff. We have another action packed week for you all on cloud native TV. Please do do us a favor. Follow uh, on Twitch, uh, follow cloud native TV. We have a lot of content we have planned for you. We have amazing guests and, 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 and amazing shows that we have planned for you all. 
But uh, next week on uh, Spotlight Live, I'm going to show a video here real quick. Um, before I do that, like this is going to be talking about, I'm, uh, I'm going to be on with Dan Lawrence. Dan Lawrence is something called the SIG Store. We're actually doing a key ceremony. Very cool. We're actually going to be signing six keys that are or five to six keys that are available for like signing for like um, the same, something that's set up for the SIG Store. It's very, very cool. It's like a once in a, like a generation type of thing. So it's very, very cool that we're covering that. And Dan's a, a fantastic guy. So we're, we have a, a really cool show planned for you all. So t- take a look at this video. Before you do that, listen, rem- remember, Cloud Native, the spotlight is on you.